Grand Theft Auto V came out in 2013. It's been six years and it's counting. In fact, some fans are really counting. Counting the days, the weeks, the years. Especially having seen just how amazing Red Dead Redemption 2 looks and what Rockstar is capable of after years of development, it's hard not to let that mouth water a bit. So what's going on? When are we going to see another game in this legendary series? Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks we ask the question, is Rockstar Games taking too long with Grand Theft Auto 6? So as I mentioned, it's been six years since the last Grand Theft Auto, which happens to be the most time that's ever happened in between Grand Theft Auto games. The first came out in 97, the second in 99, that's two years. The third in 2001, again two years. Vice City two years later in 03. San Andreas a year later in 04. Grand Theft Auto 4 in 2008. And in between 4 and 5, there was actually five years that passed. And in between 5 and now, it's been six years. But clearly, we aren't getting Grand Theft Auto 6 in a couple days, weeks, or months, as notated in the intro. And we've already passed that amount anyway. And even if we were on the verge of any kind of announcement or trailer, the first Grand Theft Auto 4 trailer came out in March 2007, and the game came out in April of 2008. Similarly, the first trailer for Grand Theft Auto 5 came out in 2011, and the game was released in 2013. It was not a short process of marketing these games, and if they dropped a trailer tomorrow, it probably wouldn't be out till 2021. And there's no indication they're dropping a trailer tomorrow either. On top of that, it's been years that Grand Theft Auto V has been out, and it's still consistently in the top 20 selling games in the United States. So it's still a cash cow when you don't even think about the Grand Theft Auto online revenue that it consistently generates, being it has the microtransactions. The point is Grand Theft Auto V is a successful business model as it is right now without investing any more money into it at all ever. They could just stop right now and continue to make tons and tons of money just off five. It's estimated the game has made over six billion dollars, and that's not gonna stop happening. So that's an obvious reason why they're not in any rush. On top of that, Red Dead Redemption 2 was amazing, and is doing the same thing in the Wild West. Now, frankly, all of this stuff paints a very rosy picture of the Grand Theft Auto Empire and its status in 2019, but we also know that at some point they will make Grand Theft Auto 6, because why wouldn't they? As much as it continues to make money hand over foot, the time when a game makes the most money is its first year. And that goes for live service games as much as it does for traditional retail. There's actually another piece of interesting context when you consider they typically release around the time of the end of a console's life cycle. It kind of allows them to do a little bit of a double dip. You get that first year release on the so-called dying console, and then when everyone wants it back on the new console, you get kind of a simulated second first year release because everybody wants it on the new console where the graphics are better, the online services are better, the interface is better, it's just more convenient to use, etc, etc. And again, I think this paints a fairly rosy picture. The health of this series is good. Nothing is particularly awkward about its position right now, but it's just been a while. And that's leaving some fans to wonder, is there more under the surface? And as it turns out, there kind of is. Between 2001's Grand Theft Auto 3 and the more recent Grand Theft Auto 5, Leslie Benzies, a Scottish game designer, ran the show. According to Benzies himself in September of 2014, Rockstar enticed him, his words not mine, to take a sabbatical, which would start in September 2014, and end a year later, which when he came back, he claims that he was no longer allowed to enter the Rockstar North office. There's an ongoing lawsuit regarding this where he's suing Rockstar for $150 million, which he claims are unpaid royalties, and is also developing his own games with some companies that he has started. Now that lawsuit isn't really done, but it did suffer a bit of a setback when some of his claims were dismissed. However, he was ruled as entitled to some degree of back royalties, 
But beyond that, I don't really know exactly what happened, nor what is still happening. Still, it should be said that there is no doubt a hole left in his place that they'll probably be able to fill at some point. It's not as if there's a shortage of talented people in this world, but when somebody's been around that long and has been involved in so many of your most successful projects, in some ways the entire process is changed as a lot went through that person. Keeping in mind that neither Red Dead Redemption game had involvement from him, however, it should be obvious that there are people capable within the studio of directing a game. Dan Hauser, Rockstar's resident head writer, has written or co-written pretty much every Grand Theft Auto game, as well as the two Red Dead Redemption games. He says something that makes me consider that it's even harder than just losing the main guy saying it's really unclear what we would even do for Grand Theft Auto 6 and expressing that he was thankful to be releasing Red Dead Redemption 2 when they did rather than Grand Theft Auto 6. Grand Theft Auto 6 is rooted much more in satire than Red Dead Redemption is. And he said the following, Both intense liberal progression and intense conservatism are both very militant and very angry. It's scary, but it's also strange, and yet both of them seem to occasionally veer towards the absurd. It's hard to satirize for those reasons. Some of the stuff you see is straightforwardly beyond satire. It would be out of date within two minutes. Everything is changing so fast. He also talked about Red Dead Redemption 2 having to not be entirely historically accurate on account of how deeply unpleasant it would have been given how people were back then. <laughs> When we consider these two comments together, we have to think of just how bizarre things must be in the eyes of another figure in the Grand Theft Auto machine that is very important. For him to say, I don't know, let's maybe do a cowboy story that we're gonna have to change a little because of slavery and horrific attitudes towards certain people. Like, I know it's not like physically worse now, but I guess I do understand why it's easier to tell a story about the past. We aren't there. Still, at this point, they're down a director and the writer doesn't know what to do. That's not exactly a recipe for a new game anytime soon, and the fact that Rockstar North doesn't have a Grand Theft Auto 6 listed on their website doesn't make me think that's going to change anytime in the immediate future. Long term, for sure, there definitely will be a Grand Theft Auto 6, why wouldn't there be, if they're literally still selling copies of it, to the point where they're in the top 20 US games sold month on month, every year since release. There's not really any legitimate reason to think Grand Theft Auto 6 wouldn't do the same thing unless it was very bad, and there's no real reason to think that when they finally do release one, it's just something they've churned out. Rockstar has not done that with a single one of its mainline titles, ever. Now, Leslie Benzie wasn't just the director of the Grand Theft Auto games, he was also the head of Rockstar North, and the ARC director, for a pretty large number of Rockstar's games, became the new co-head along with Andrew Semple. There's also the fact that whatever the next Grand Theft Auto game is will require probably a similar situation to how Red Dead Redemption 2 was developed, which over time consolidated all of the studios under the Rockstar Games umbrella into one worldwide team, because damn, that is a big game. So at the moment, the real questions are, is that going to be the kind of effort put behind Grand Theft Auto 6? Who will direct, and when will we hear about it? Well, given it's been six years, and honestly, we don't have a real answer for any of those questions, I'm going to go ahead and say that, yes, I think Rockstar Games is taking too long with Grand Theft Auto 6. Now, does that mean I'm going to say, oh, they're in the wrong and they need to do something different? No, probably not. Too long is an opinion. It's my opinion. But I also kind of trust their judgment on this. While I'm certainly antsy for another Grand Theft Auto game, I have to imagine that they're going to want to pull off a process that yields something at least as good as Red Dead Redemption 2, which is, for all intents and purposes, one of the most interactive games of all time. If not the most, if we're specifically talking about 
at that scale. So between that and the fact that they're still raking in the cash for Grand Theft Auto V, again, both in retail and in ongoing microtransaction money. In fact, I'd recommend going back to a video we did in 2017 about why they haven't made any single player DLC yet. It again, ultimately comes down to money, but understanding the context that we've assembled in this one, maybe it kind of doesn't. Maybe they could push out a Grand Theft Auto 6 at a time when they'd have to shove a new person into the creative director position and the head writer doesn't really know what to do and we wouldn't get the best game. I don't doubt they could have done that. And even though I'm kind of aching for it, I'm kind of ready to see the next Grand Theft Auto. I kind of don't want to see a bad Grand Theft Auto game ever. So I'm torn between two positions. Personally, of course, it's taken too long. But talking about the company and about the quality control, maybe it hasn't? I don't know, what do you think? Leave us a comment, tell us what's on your mind, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.